Vietnam. Vietnam now is a, a very nice mix of traditional and modern. It's culture and people. There's this beautiful balance, old and new, I love it. And it's historical stories. The history is trying to explain why might the Vietnamese people feel that way. Those are exactly what have kept this Australian man here for the last 15 years. It was difficult for Paul to communicate with Vietnamese people when he first set his foot here. Too few people could speak English back then. However, at that time, the harmonious fusion between Vietnamese traditional culture and its modern life attracted him more than anything. Then Paul gradually found himself attracted to the historical stories of Vietnam. His journey to discover Vietnam also started from there. Hello everyone, my name is Thuy Jin and I'm so happy to see you here today on Sharing Vietnam on VTC 10 Netviet channel. And today, I would love to introduce to you a man who has been living here for 15 years in Vietnam and he has a great love for the history of this place. May I introduce Mr. Paul Ra. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I know that you have a website which is paulshistoryclub.webly.com. Yes. So can you share a little bit about this website? That website started many years ago and it's really where I put new pieces of knowledge that I've just learned about Vietnam. Because I'm learning about Vietnam. A lot of people think, oh, I'm some sort of historian. Um, and yes, I have studied Vietnamese history at university, but I didn't know back then that I was going to be living here for 15 years. So a lot of what I learned at university is gone. Um, but the website is a reflection of how much I know. So every story that's in that website grows gradually and that reflects my new knowledge about that particular topic or article that I'm studying and writing about. Um, and what I noticed, or when I noticed that, I then started to intentionally write history mysteries. And history mysteries is where I start to talk about something that I don't know the ending of and get everybody else in the world to help me finish that story. And that just grows and grows and grows. And I really like the dynamics of that website, uh, but it's really just a reflection of my brain uh, learning more about Vietnam. Okay, so our, what is the first impression or motivation when you first started to search and work about their history? It was difficult. Uh, I don't speak Vietnamese very well. My French is very limited. I know a few words in Russian, um, but you go maybe uh, to some place and you hear rumors about something very, very interesting. So you start digging and it's like you're coming up against a brick wall all the time, all the time. So when I think back to those early days of me trying to research, oh, I just think it was really, really difficult. It's taken many years to acquire friends who will help me. Uh, if I've got something in the old nom that uh, I want to have translated, there's somebody who can translate that for me. Uh, just, just friends that I know who will help me with old maps, things like that. Um, but my very, very first adventure, I suppose you'd say, in regards to history, was when I went to Vung Tau Island and I heard this rumour about a shrine that had been lost. Um, the last tiger shrine had been lost. And I thought, Wow, this sounds like an adventure. So it took me three years. Mm -hmm. I found where the last tiger shrine is. And uh, then I was, one of my stories was about finding the last tiger shrine and how it got that name and all of the rumors and myths 
that grow up around shrines very, very quickly. Uh, and yeah, that's one of the first things I think about when I think about first starting into the history of Vietnam. So you also make me feel so curious about the shrine and even the historical stories that you wrote. And that became very obvious when I was chatting to people. People are interested in this history. So, okay, let's build a website so people can share. And then, oh, let's write a book so that I can share again. Mm -hmm. Well, let's write a, a deeper book because I know more now. Um, and I think, yeah, you've got to share this information because people do get interested in it. It's, it's a fascinating history. So uh, how did you research, search and select their information and their historical story uh, in the places that you came to and the places that you discovered? Sometimes it's purely accidental. Uh, sometimes it's just a, a few lines in a newspaper. Um, I started a really large search. Uh, one day I went to have breakfast and I noticed three or four lines in a newspaper clipping that morning and it was talking about the French had blown up a citadel in Barria. And I thought, wow, that's strange. I didn't know there was a citadel in Barria. I finished that story only six months ago, I suppose, and that would have started six years ago, seven years ago. But people from all over the world started sending me bits and pieces and just as I got really excited about finding this citadel, because there's nothing left now, you know, finding exactly where it was, all of a sudden that story discovered that there was a second citadel in Barria. Nobody had any idea that the first one was there. And then we find out that, hang on, there was a bigger one before that. So one story, leads to another story, leads to another story. And you have a chain of stories. Yes, and because I've been writing those stories so long now, it makes perfect sense that stories that I might have written about Vung Tau or Baria are starting to connect to history in Ho Chi Minh City or in Binwa or uh, Da Nang. They're all starting to connect now because all history is connected. So it's like a secret that you discover, everything is connected. Oh yes, yes. And I, I quite often talk about the things that I do as discovering. Like I, I discovered uh, a buried cham fort, right, which I did, okay. It's not as if I went out there with my shovel and I was digging, I found it. What I did was I found a newspaper clipping, a tiny newspaper clipping of a professor who'd found a cham fort many, many years ago out in Barria, and I went looking for it. And yes, I did find it, but it was, everybody else knew where it was anyway, but it still made very exciting story because even the local people didn't know, the professor knew, the, uh, the army knew, um, but most people have forgotten about the story that, that their village is uh, on a, a buried cham fort. Uh, so, yeah, every, I, I talk about discovering things all the time because it's, it's exciting, that's what it feels like. Paul learned about Vietnamese history by exploring historical sites, reading books, doing researches and analysing events. He has kept all the collected stories and images on his own website. To him, knowledge is precious and he needs to display all the knowledge that he has accumulated over the years on an online platform so that everyone around him can learn about it. If so, Paul's effort will not be meaningless. So I feel like uh, you are really hungry for the history of the places, no, right? Yes, so that's right. I am so curious about, I mean, like, is there any place that you discover and you search so much as you are doing now? I thought a few years ago that I had found enough stories, 
right? But then when I decided I was going to come and live in Ho Chi Minh City, yes. all of a sudden I've got super excited again um, because there's every time I turn around, there is a really great bit of history and I'm so curious, I have to find out what that's about. Um, so one of my friends was in a coffee shop in District uh, 10, just a, or District 8, just a little while ago. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that him and his wife had been out to this super old shrine, 300 year old shrine. And it had a particular carving of, from the first emperor as a, as a gift. I thought, oh wow, you know, I had to go out and find, you know, find what, what was this plaque all about. I couldn't help myself, right? I just had to do that. Once I get curious about something, then I just want to know more and more and more. And that simple story about that shrine has now become a, another history mystery. Mm -hmm. And no doubt that will also run for a few years. So what made you feel most proud of in your journey? Well, it's really just meeting people. Just, just meeting people. Meeting people, mm -hmm. constantly meeting new people. Is, uh, because I know lots of people come here and they think they've seen Vietnam, but they've only spoken to one or two people, mm -hmm. maybe a bus driver or whatever. No, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, I've met uh, Vietnamese, real Vietnamese people, you know, gone out to the rice fields and, and, and met grandma. And uh, no, it's, it's, it's the people that, and the people that I've met or, or, or whatever. You're talking to the people. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's too easy to come to a place like this and maybe sit in the hotel foyer and think that you're seeing Vietnam or maybe taking one or two tours and thinking you're seeing Vietnam. You, you've got to be out and being nosy and asking questions and then you, you'll find the best of the people. Mm. Because people, Vietnamese people are very helpful, which is great if you love history and you're always asking questions, yes. So you mean like uh, you are looking for the soul of the places through people and the oh, story of people? Yes, yes. So I, I like history, but my love is culture and culture is how people behave. Yeah. So by, by talking to the people, I'm then getting a sense of the emotions that they're feeling and why they may be feeling these emotions. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the culture that's my passion and it, the history is trying to explain why might the Vietnamese people feel that way. So uh, I think 15 years is a very long time, right? It has been a very long time since you lived here yes. and you learned about this place. Yes. I'm pretty sure that you have a, like a deep understanding about the culture of this place. Okay, so uh, I would love to ask you, uh, which culture, the Western and the Eastern, mm -hmm. is more appreciated and favorable nowadays? See, one of the purposes of culture, especially now, is to try and show everybody that people are more similar than different, mm -hmm. right? Uh, previously, culture sort of divided people up into groups and, and the world was broken, was very fractured. And now what culture is trying to show is what they've known for 200 years. Most people are very, very similar. Doesn't matter what side of the planet they come from. Most people are extremely similar. There will be some differences. Those small differences will be quite deep. But so trying to divide up and compare East and West, I feel like meaningless clash, clashes with my ideology a bit. I know that we are we are trying to living their diversity, mm. but uh, above the diversity is their similarity. You mean we are one. And even though we are from different areas, we are the same. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you for coming here and thank you for the interesting sharings. Thank you for having me, Trin. It's been fun. It's the end of Sharing Vietnam today. Thank you for watching and see you again.